Hello everyone, Shinto Bean here playing some more Warhammer combat cards and we are taking a look at another balance update. Uh, this one is at the start of the Call Battle Pass, where you cannot get a copy of the Warlord, Belisarius Call, but you can get uh, the Legendary Bodyguard which still exists in the game. And I've seen a surprising amount of people complaining about there being two versions of the same character in the game. I, I personally don't really see what's wrong with it. I mean, yeah, it hasn't been done before, but uh, as long as you can't use both cards in the same deck, I think it, it's fine. But yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at what cards have changed this season. There have been some very interesting, somewhat questionable changes, uh, but we'll take a look at each card. Starting with Servants of the Emperor. We've got the Sicarian Rust Stalker. This one used to have Death Blow, and it got its trait changed to the new Anti-Infantry trait, uh, which I don't think is very good on a cheap card like this. Uh, they did buff its stats... Uh, by 10 health and plus 5 melee. So, uh, it actually used to overlap with this card. Uh, the Sister Repenti was the same number of points and still has Death Blow. Neither of them are that amazing, but I, I feel like Death Blow is still actually better uh, because at least it's guaranteed to go off and deal some damage, whereas Anti Infantry, after playing around with it a bit, is, it's kind of situational. Despite how many infantry cards there are in the game, it's still kind of hard to line it up across from an enemy infantry and then have it deal enough damage that it actually makes a difference. So a lot of other traits I think are better, and uh, I'm not really sure why you would take the Rust Stalker over, say, uh, Aximilian, or uh, again, the Sister Repentia with Deathblow. So I'm not going to go through all of the anti-infantry trait changes since I already did that in another video, but we do have a couple other cards that got their trait changed, like this uh, Secutary Hoplite, who got a little bit of a buff to his melee attack and... His trait was changed from Furious Charge to Shield, making him a lot better, for sure. This is a card that I never used before, and uh, now I would actually consider using it. 5-point Shield that actually hits decently hard, that uh, could be pretty useful. Moving on, we got the Tech Priest Manipulus, a ranged mono attacker. Uh, this guy got plus 10 to his health and plus 5 ranged. Now he uh, has a very powerful gun there. And uh, this guy has been buffed before in the past as well. Uh, regeneration, not the most amazing trait. But still, at 16 points, this guy is quite strong, stats-wise. And unsurprisingly, it is the Adeptus Mechanicus that are getting the most buffs. So we've got the Stratoraptor, which is down 1 point, meaning it will no longer take extra damage from big game hunters, and also getting plus 15 to its health. Uh, this thing does have a pretty powerful ranged attack. Uh, before, I would say it was one of the weaker ranged units for its cost, but uh, this definitely does make it quite a bit stronger. The good old Hound Dog Aximilian got a plus 10 to his health and plus 5 melee. I do sometimes run this with a Canonist Viridian. I think just buffing the, the melee attack is pretty useful. On a 4 point card, the, the health is not really necessary because you kind of want those fodder cards to die. Uh, as cruel as that is to a loyal canid like this puppy. But um, yeah, still a decent card I'd say. Then we got Alea and Valerian. This is a card that I used to run a lot with Canonist Viridian. Uh, back when there were no better options. It was a powerful card for a long time, but it has recently fallen off in terms of uh, power level. So they've brought it back up by giving it a significant buff, plus 15 health, plus 10 ranged, and plus 10 melee. So this is actually a very cost-effective card now. Moving on to Eldari. We've got the card that I still refuse to use, the Harlequin Skyweaver Jetbike, but this is getting a pretty massive buff, plus 25 to its health and plus 10 ranged. You can see here, if I were to upgrade this thing, it would actually be quite strong, uh, but still I prefer using uh, other less ugly models. We've got the Razorwing Jetfighter. This one did get its trait changed from outflank to anti-infantry. It also did get a buff of plus 10 health and plus 15 ranged, which is pretty significant. Uh, outflank... I'd say is overall maybe a little bit better. However, the Eldari do have access to quite a few cards with Outflank already. So I, I guess, I mean, this adds a little bit of more variety, at least, to the roster. We've got the Farseer Skyrunner. Uh, this one got a pretty massive buff as well. Plus 20 health, plus 5 range, plus 10 psychic, and plus 5 melee. So just an all-around huge buff. Uh, I think I usually run this with uh, Eldrod. And yeah, definitely uh, quite a bit stronger now. Moving on to the Necrons. Just one single change here by the looks of it. Uh, the Lich Guard with Shield got uh, plus 5 to its health and plus 5 melee, which I'm not sure was really necessary. I, I don't actually run this card very much, but it already had pretty good stats, I think, for its cost. Because I know they've buffed it in the past. Moving on to the Tau, we've got the Ethereal Guard. Uh, I think this guy has been buffed in the past as well. Uh, he's got Taunt, so it's actually a pretty useful card, especially with Dark Strider, but they're giving him plus 15 health. He will be able to absorb a bit more damage. 
than in the past. We've got the Fire Blade with Inspiring Presence. This guy got just an all-around buff of a plus 5 health, plus 3 to both his ranged and melee attack stats. It's a card that I haven't really used much. It does have pretty decent stats now, so um, I guess I'll see if I can fit it into a deck somewhere. We've got some other old cards that are getting uh, buffed here. The Broadside Battlesuit, this one again has been buffed in previous balance passes, but it's getting buffed once again, plus 11 to its ranged attack, meaning this thing can really deal some serious damage uh, with those missiles now. 84 ranged here at the level I have it. That's uh, that is significant, considering the fact that it has barrage. Moving on to Space Marines, we got the Ultramarines Eliminator with target acquired. This one used to have a fair bit of health, but a very weak ranged attack. Uh, they've buffed it significantly here, plus 11 to its ranged, so... I'm um, still not sure if it's really the best option to be using. The Bladeguard Ancient, this was a pretty useless card. It's a fairly new one, so I had it at a low level and didn't really bother upgrading it because it just dealt no damage at all. It is uh, very tanky, and it has decent attack stats now that they've buffed it by plus 7 ranged and plus 10 melee. Moving on to Chaos. We got the Friendly Neighborhood Sloppity Bile Piper getting plus 15 health. Uh, Chaos have a number of these sort of very weak cards with Inspiring Presence. Um, you can see I have over 500 copies of this card, and I uh, haven't bothered upgrading them. We got the Chaos Ogren. Uh, this one, I think, got its melee attack buffed in the past, but it still had pretty low health uh, for its cost, and also considering it's a taunt card, that uh, makes sense that they gave it more health here. Plus 20. We've got the Scarab Occult Sorcerer. This one was a pretty powerful Psyker that I almost always ran when going with a Psychic deck, especially with Ariman. Uh, but they have buffed his Psychic attack by plus 10, making it uh, quite a bit stronger uh, with that Psychic link, and then plus 2 to his ranged and melee stats. Moving on to Orcs. We've got the Commando Knob with Target Acquired. This one got a pretty significant buff of plus 10 health and plus 15 to the melee attack, so hitting quite a bit harder. Uh, very good card to use with boss Snickrot. We got the Snakebite Warboy. I have been seeing this guy appear a little bit more often in decks uh, with like boss Zagstruck. Uh, having that psychic attack is pretty useful. And uh, yeah, plus 20 to his health and plus 7 to the psychic attack, so making him a bit more durable. Uh, having all three attack types with the Berserk uh, is a pretty powerful combo. And yeah, he has a bit more staying power now with that health boost. Uh, Gruck Face Ripper. This is a pretty old classic uh, orc with inspiring presence, and they have buffed him significantly. Plus 25 health and plus 14 to the melee attack, so he's hitting very hard now. Pretty good for the cost, I'd say. And it seems they forgot to mention in this uh, blog, but this Gretchen uh, no longer has Endless, uh, but now has Taunt instead. So 3-point Taunt. Pretty useful, but uh, I'm afraid that the Endless trait was actually more useful on this uh, be specifically with Zodgrod Wartsnaga, who now, uh, instead of him, you'll have to run the Beast Snaga Boy, which is not as great an option because it is quite a bit more expensive and just has a lot more health, meaning it'll be a little bit harder to get uh, the boost from uh, his special rule going. Moving on to Tyranids. So we've got the uh, ranged hybrid here with Big Game Hunter. And this was already a, a quite a strong card, actually, uh, after they buffed it a few seasons back, I think. It, it actually hits very hard, especially with the Jackal Alphys Warlord. And it also has a decent amount of health, I, I thought, but uh, they're giving it a bit more health, uh, plus 5 to the health, and plus 8 ranged attack. So now you kind of really have to use this card with the Jackal Alphys. It's, it's so good for its cost. It's, it's kind of ridiculous, actually. We got the Zone Thrope. Uh, this one was a bit on the weaker end. Uh, I still ran it with the Psychers because uh, they're limited options. But yeah, if you're going with a Psychic deck, uh, this thing is uh, quite good now post buff. Plus 10 to its health and plus 11 Psychic. As long as you're running it with other Psychers, it's going to be hitting quite hard. And we got a pretty big change to Old One Eye. So his trait used to be Regeneration and Berserk, which is actually a pretty good combo. I mean, Regeneration is not a, a great trait overall, but with Berserk at least, uh, with it continuing to increase the health, uh, you can get that melee attack charged up to greater degrees. Uh, they've swapped it to Endless, which is in a void, I think, better than Regeneration. Like, he's going to come back with a large chunk of his health intact. However, the Berserk is what it does not combo with, because his melee attack is going to reset when he respawns. So that's kind of the, the one downside. And they've also nerfed his health by a bit. So I think this one is a bit iffy. I mean, 50 points is quite expensive for a mono melee attacker. And I, I think there are better options than Old One-Eye. I think his usage is very limited at the moment. 
And finally, for the Leagues of Votan, we got the Grenade Dude with Deathblow getting plus 5 to his melee stats. Uh, this is a card that I do not own in my collection. And then the Sagator, pretty big ranged vehicle, is getting a significant buff of plus 25 health and plus 5 ranged attack. Uh, so that is it for the balance changes for the Adeptus Mechanicus season. Let me know what you think of these changes and if there are any other cards that you think really need to be modified. Once again, wishing you all a happy holiday season. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.